Great. Again, everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for uh, this webinar today. Um, the title is Internet Memes and the Equity of Mood and Online Learning. And we have our presenter here, David Green. Thank you so much for, for presenting for us, David. You can go ahead and take it away and introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm going to first um, try to get my Microsoft PowerPoint up. Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming to this talk, this webinar, uh, this engagement. Um, I'm going to open my, can you all see um, this? Okay, all right. So, all right. So first of all, again, thank you all for coming. Happy Wednesday. I'm coming from or speaking from Los Angeles, California, and it's beautiful outside. If you are in the snowy parts of the country, uh, thank you for enduring the cold weather to kind of, well, you're probably not outside, but to join me. So I'm David Green, Dr. Green to my students, and I am an assistant professor of women's gender and sexuality studies at Cal State LA. Um, and today I really wanna to talk to you about an ongoing new project uh, that came to me over the course of teaching online over the last three years. I'm back in person uh, this year. So this information is coming from my, my early start to my career. And it's, in, it's about internet memes and the equity of move in online learning. And so before we even get started, I want you to already be thinking about, because at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna ask you to share a meme as I do all of my students. So as you begin to think, if you not use memes or gifts in your classrooms or on your social media or in your everyday life, now it's gonna be a good practice for us to do that. So I'm gonna um, ask that you think about a meme that represents how you're feeling, right? And we're gonna talk through and we're gonna share hopefully your meme at the end of this presentation. With my students, I typically begin with, but I'm gonna talk about um, all of that now. Is it okay to proceed everyone? Thumbs up, green check, yes. Hopefully you're all feeling well um, before we begin. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, uh oh. Uh -oh, uh oh, I guess I have to use this. So there are two objectives that I uh, want to get through today, and only two, because I don't want to overwhelm anyone. But the first one is to discuss how internet memes help me create spaces to reflect on well-being as a method of teaching and learning and online education. And as we all know, within the context of COVID-19. That's one objective. And then the other is, or the second is to discuss how internet means led me to develop a method for teaching informed by social and emotional learning. So SEL and equity centered trauma and informed education. So those are the kind of two thrusts that I hope to kind of achieve today. Oh, this is backwards, sorry everyone. Um, so a little bit of story time. First, I want to also say that um, my, my doctorate degree is in American studies. I was trained um, in, in the context of African American studies and Black studies, queer studies, and LGBT studies. Um, I began my first job, however, as an administrator, as a chief diversity officer. And so when I finished at the University of Michigan in 2015, I went into administration. And as a chief diversity officer, that really kind of shifted how I interacted, how I practiced, how I engaged with students, how I thought about the world. So I didn't necessarily apply my, um, or use a lot of the kind of theoretical frameworks and methodologies that I was writing in my dissertation to the work, even though it informed a lot of my work. So I was a chief diversity officer at a private um, school in upstate New York for nearly four years. And then I decided to um, return or give the tenure track um, opportunity, I mean, the tenure track jobs, another opportunity for my life. So I applied for jobs and landed at Cal State LA. And I applied right um, at the start of the pandemic. Um, many years ago, as you all know, it was like, oh, there's this pandemic starting and it's not started to enter the United States. And I was out at lunch with a student when I learned that, um, spaces in New York were, was closing down. I did my job interviews at Cal State LA right at the start, really, of the pandemic, really not understanding the severity of it. And when I got my job offer, I was, always, I was also told that, by the way, we are going to shift online. 
everyone, when we start in the fall of 2020, we will all be remote, we will all be virtual. And I was completely nervous. I was terrified. I had never taught online before. I, I, I said to myself, I can't do this. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll defer my acceptance to another year. Um, but I was completely like losing it. I was like, I cannot do this. And so I had to ask myself, how do I uh, do this? How do I teach online? Because I'm so used, I'm an animated person. I get into the classroom and it becomes my theater and I connect using my body and you know objects and, 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 pro and props. And so the idea of teaching online absolutely terrified me um, or teaching virtually. So I said, well, what do I do? Of course, I wanna open my course by saying hello and introducing myself to my students. And, and I did that quite successfully. I just, hello, I'm Dr. Green, and I'm your teacher. I'm your uh, uh, professor this semester. And then without a moment's notice, I think over the course of the second week of class, something just said to ask the students how they are doing. And I said, select a meme. Find it because we were online. I said, find a meme uh, that really captures your feeling at the moment. And at the time, I thought it was just a tool to kind of break the ice, a tool to kind of adjust to teaching online. And I, that's all I thought I would be doing. However, I saw the reaction to it and I saw the ways that the students responded. So I then started to really deliberately think about this as a practice. And so over the course of the years that I taught online, which was my first two years of my job this past year, this past fall uh, 20 something semester was my first time back in person. But I said to myself, I'm going to use the, the kind of ongoing weeks of week four and maybe the midterm season between week seven and eight. And of course, the last part or the conclusion of the semester to really use this as a benchmark to check in with my students. And that's ex exactly what I was doing. Um, and so I replicated this process um, over the course of time and in each class that I taught. And I did it for the first, I know the first three years or two years, but I still do it now. And so I, we ask ourselves, so what are internet memes? And I'm gonna discuss my findings, but I wanna kind of give a sense for the folks in the room who may or may not uh, uh, know what these are. So internet memes are images usually accompanied with words. Right, you see an image and it has a block text of something conveying some some idea, and these are often parody or they're funny or they're shocking or they're they're something. But we're, it, 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 they are supposed to kind of invoke a response from us, right? Usually, in my um, instance, in my experience with them, they're usually very funny. They capture our feelings about a situation in a given moment or across a span of time. Um, and what that means is that you might have experienced something and you're upset, right? And you need to go find a meme to convey that. Or your meme could represent how you've been feeling over the course of a week or weeks or a month or a you know, year, if, that's, if, if it goes that far. So they represent that. And they can either be still images, like a simple photo, um, or they have block text. And we'll see some of those. And I have examples of both the still images and the gift in this talk. And the GIF means a graphics internet exchange, I mean, a graphics interchange format. And what these are, what these are, you probably have seen them is when they move, right? So they animate the image with movement or some type of action or silent sound, like an onomatopoeia, um, for example. And they are usually um, uh, only a few seconds in length. They're not long at all. They're not like a short film. They're like five seconds or less and they just kind of move or so. And we'll see the cat meme, for example, doing that. And so over the course of the, uh, the years that I have been doing this, I got a combination of both still images and gifts. And oftentimes the students and I would crack up over these, but we will also have wonderful engagement. Clear everyone about what a meme is? Any confusion about that? And so the next question that we think about are why memes? 
uh, like I said earlier, I had no real reason other than I have experienced them on, uh, on my social internets, on my social media pages, Facebook. I don't have TikTok, um, but mostly Instagram and Facebook. And I thought it was just spontaneous. And like I said, they are the rave on social media um, and they represent moods and feelings. But over time, again, I cannot stress this enough, I saw the value of them as a teaching tool and learning tool um, for my students. And I will share these in a bit, but I think I, think I wanna show you some of the memes that we saw in class or that we uh, saw over a period of time. And so I wanna say the most recurring memes, and I kind of, the way I've analyzed these is I try to put uh, categories where, you know, what were the pictures themselves and then what was the language? So what were the themes over them, right? So over the past few, the characters that surfaced the most and resurfaced is the SpongeBob character. So you have SpongeBob himself um, and his friend, the starfish, Patrick, and then Squidward will come up over and over again in various ways. You had cat memes, and by cat memes, you know, literally uh, kittens or cats, but also pet memes came up, dogs, for example, but mostly a lot of cat memes came up. Um, world on fire means, and I have a few of those when, for example, the foreground is a person perhaps working on something and the background is all aflame, right? And the person is like, I'm fine, I'm, I'm going to get through this or whatever. Um, and then facial expressions came up over and over again. And those really convey confusion, shock, overwhelming, uncertainty, and confusion again. And I put that deliberately there. Some of them um, also were crying or exhaustion memes, like the facial memes were in tears, some of them were kind of a shock in tears, and some of them are like yawning and they're tired, right? Only some of the memes, now our students are not, you know, always kind of down, some of them closer to vacation time or closer to the end of the semester would do happy memes. We're going to get through this, it's vacation, it's sunshine, um, and so they will report those, but not, you know, not in, a, not in a great number, but only close to when it was almost time to be done with either the uh, semester or when we were approaching break. So my analysis kind of revealed those. And then some means by the theme, like I said, tire and exhaustion, no sleep. School, 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 overwhelmingly so, school. And a lot of my students uh, at Cal State LA are working, they're balancing life. So a lot of the means we're trying to figure out how do I balance and manage uh, my life with, you know, schoolwork or family. And some of my students were, or are our parents or caretakers. And it must go on. We must get through this. We cannot stop. And I'll talk about why that in particular to in relations to uh, teaching at an HSI or Hispanic Servant Institution where I teach mostly black and brown students. We must go on. We must get through this. Um, we can't stop even if the world is on fire. Um, I don't want to take being in school for granted, for example. And then don't give up. That is really closely related to kind of grit, right? So those were um, the, the means by theme. So we have the images, like what were the pictures and then what were the themes, make sense? Okay, so now I wanna talk about the characters that we saw on here. So here are the, recur here are the, the SpongeBob characters. In a lot of sense, I can't get every character, but I kind of wanna have a representation. Often over, it was the shock SpongeBob, right? It was the SpongeBob with the big eyes, the open mouth, and just screaming. I found one image of Patrick in Zen mode, right? But the rest were uh, Patrick and Squidward screaming, right? And just utter chaos. What these revealed was anxiety for students, when I had conversations, after each student would share their meme, I would ask them to voluntarily share why they chose that meme. And um, the notes reveal that they were anxious about school, right? So anxiety came up, nervousness. I am very nervous, Dr. Green. I'm very nervous about stepping outside. I don't wanna work. I, I'm, I'm nervous about my family. My family has uh, COVID. I don't know what to really do. Right. 
shock, as I said, just complete shock at the state of the world. A lot of our students, a lot of my students were also um, just graduating high school and attending school for the first time. And they were just shocked that they wouldn't have that kind of first year experience on campus. Um, so that's that. Here is the world on fire meme. I'm fine, but the world is on fire. This came up, this exact meme came up and I'll just read it. So the first comic panel is a dog sitting at a table, looking at the coffee, staring blanketly, and behind the dog is fire. And then we get this comment of, this is fine. And then the next panel says, I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. I'm just gonna have my coffee, right? And then I'm gonna drink my coffee as everything around me is on fire. That's okay, things are gonna be okay. And we start to really see in this particular meme, the dog is now starting to catch a flame. It's starting to kind of feel the burn, right? And so the last um, one is complete meltdown, right? And so when I ask my students over the course of time to talk through this meme, what we get is there's usually in denial about what's going on around them. And by denial, I'm refusing to admit that this is happening or see it or even acknowledge it. There's, there's a delusion behind it. Again, that's, uh, I think, closely associated with denial. And this is the important part, the faux grit, or, or I must um, go on or persevere. A lot of, like I said, a lot of my students are, they're the first gen student, they're the first in their family, they cannot take this moment for granted. So they have been taught to just get through it, right? And that get through then, they um, try their best until the capacity to, to do so is no longer there and they have a meltdown. Right. So they um, break down in class or they break down outside of class. Care reports are increasing. I work closely with the associate dean and we get this idea that students are just having anxiety attacks. They feel like they can't do it. The world is closing in on them. I have no idea how to survive this. And so we think about, well, um, have you been, how have you been taught to really deal with your environment? Right. So and they have been taught to just go on. Right. And so this meme comes up over and over and over again. And uh, this meme and a kind of replication or a uh, uh, similar meme. Here is the GIF, right? This is what a GIF looks like. So you have a rapid movement, um, like a pro, right? You're working like a pro. And of course, this is the cat meme. Um, and this comes up in a variety of fashions, it's not only a cat, it's someone else, it's, it's sometimes it's sometimes be a, be a person. But this is the, the cat meme or gif, and it's the constant working, right? I'm working, I've got to stay, it's related to the world on fire, but here maybe the, the environment's not on fire, but the, the ideal of I gotta just constantly work because I have a lot of classes, I have a lot of papers, I have a lot of assignments, a lot of midterms, and it's, it's all coming at, to me, it's all coming to me at once. Right. So this constant at the computer. Stay busy. And what we talk about in this is we will um, glorify uh, uh, busy culture or the kind of glorification of busy. I must stay busy. I must seem productive when inside I might be having a meltdown or I'm exhausted, but I, I have to continuously go. Again, this meme comes up a lot. And confused still, why am I working this much? So a lot of students would say to me, uh, Dr. Green, I don't understand why the professors are giving us so much work. Like, I don't understand how to like manage any of this, right? But I must, I must get through it. Here is the meme you may have seen um, in many contexts, right? This is a, a, an example of the face meme, like what is going on? You know, I, I don't understand this. What's happening? Kind of like uncertainty, looking out the formulations of life, of school, a family, of work, or trying to balance that. Is there a science to management? Is there a science to survival? I have no idea. I'm confused about everything. And sometimes this relates to coursework, sometimes it relates to life in general, sometimes it relates to work or kind of those kind of in, in between spaces. 
I'm lost and I'm confused. I often um, get this from everybody, you know, this kind of meme. Is there a kind of a scientific approach to surviving this mess is what we kind of get out of this. I have no idea. And then of course, the, the, the last thing that I'll share here is the recurring meme of the cat or someone at a computer trying to work, but they are exhausted. My current mood is I'm tired. I can't leave my computer though. I can't leave work. I have to get through this. I must nap, but I'm exhausted. And I do not need, or I cannot take this break. I cannot lose this moment, right? I must work. Again, the glorification of busy. Uh, and I need to nap and sleep, but I might waste time doing so. I'll sleep when everything is done, is what one of my students said. I'll get sleep when I'll turn all my projects. So I kind of want you to kind of to see what this looks like on a Padlet, because the process when I taught online was that I used Padlet for all of this. Um, uh, all of my classes. And so once you start to see how this looks on, I'm gonna just bring up all of, the, just a few of these, but all of the links associated. So hopefully it goes to my Padlet. If not, please, please, please forgive me cross fingers, <laughs> you know, that the link works. Um, but here is, okay, here is WGSS. So, uh, WGSS is the, is the core course for the major. And as you can see, this is week two, okay? Thursday, February 3rd, and we talk about gender. And I had asked them, so, I, so you can see the kind of productivity, right? So here is the agenda, check in, meme yourself. And I asked the students to um, share their meme, and they do. And so on Padlet, even though this looks chaotic, they do populate in a, in a particular order. Um, but by the time we're done, this is what it looks like, right? Um, and I asked the students to share. And the, the second week, you can see the anxiety. I'm good, waiting for the weekend. Brace yourself. And of course, you see SpongeBob here beating the book. And a lot of different uh, characters, stressed, tired, happy. Here is the meme of a baby crying, another SpongeBob. Here's the cat meme. I mean, it just goes on and on. And you think, I asked my students, I said, but it's just week two of the semester. And this is what it is. Um, and then we also think about, well, what's the link between the memes and the productivity of course engagement? And I, an example of once we check in with our students, right? Um, then they really are activated. So here is one Padlet where all of the students are basically chit-chatting their way. And it's a really productive. So we'll we can talk about in the discussion whether or not there is a kind of way that, you know, checking in increases in course engagement beyond just sharing our emotions. And I would argue that they do. Across all of my classes, again, students are writing and they're talking and they're using the Padlet. I'm gonna just go down here. The other here is another. This is week seven, and this is the more advanced students. This, these are the seniors. This is my queer theory class, level four. Um, this is week seven. And I asked them to check in, see how they're doing. My queer theory students had maybe 10 or so students, so fewer because it's an advanced course. Um, so you hear is Squidward again coming up. Here is the one that I spoke of earlier with Patrick in Zen mode, you know, and a lot of facial expressions. What do words mean? Nothing to me anymore. You can kind of play that gif. Here's an example. I hope it works. So, right. Um, here is just wandering around and just, uh, you know, uh, 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 face, facial expressions, right, came up a lot in this one, like, what's going on? Here are the tears, and here's another Simpsons character, here's Lisa, and then one of the students said, let's get this done together, because what we talk about here is, like, some strategies are, like, how do we get through this, and so we talk about that. Um, another example is week nine, mental health check-in, so by this time, I had started to think I need specific days. This is another, this is WGSS 2000, and maybe a different section, and I call it the mental health. So as I'm doing this, I'm more deliberate in naming these as mental health check-ins by week nine. So students are taking their midterms or doing midterm projects, right? 
here is Elmo. I'm going to Six Flags, right? But you start to see SpongeBob and The Simpsons over again, more facial expressions, um, X, Y, and Z. So this was our mental health check-in. And I think this is the last one, um, queer theory, uh, week two with queer theory students and more facial expressions, more trying to figure out like what is going on in, in, in this life, right? Um, I can't remember if this is second year uh, or first year, I'm uh, not first year, but the um, year one or year two of my teaching. Um, but again, the, the engagement really increases when we check in, more facial expressions, more than quite a few. So what do I learn? So I, I sat down with myself and I said, so what do I take away as an instructor? And I must say that a, a large part of my teaching effectiveness, I participate in a lot of AQ workshops that talk about teaching online. I just finished one of the modules about, I forget what it is, fostering lifelong learning online. I just kind of finished that. And I think I did one. I have one more to go before I get the kind of uh, teaching certificate. But a lot of my uh, strategy was was pulling from AQ, was pulling from my teaching experience in the classroom um, and trying to be as equitable as possible as I do my teaching and learning. So I advance or am currently working through this ideal of equity of mood, right? So what these means reflect is an idea that our students have a range of emotions that they're trying to grapple with and express as they endure COVID, as they pursue degrees, as they work, as they live. So a pedagogical theory that I'm currently working through, and in short, a preliminary concept is the idea that all emotions have merit in learning, sharing literacy development and building in the classroom. And it gives each student an idea to share, right? Share your emotions, right? Share how you're feeling. Before we even get started, just talk to me and talk to us about what's going on. And it's not a forced thing. There's no incentive. There's no points. There's no grading. There's no right. There is no wrong. Just share. So everyone has emotions and you can, I invite you to share them. Must have an equity center approach to well-being, feeling and emotion. So that's kind of what it's teaching me. We must have an equity. Like I said, everyone has an opportunity to share how they're feeling. And sometimes those feelings are, you know, not happy. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're sad, sometimes they're not sad, but everyone, when we think about the equity of well-being and emotion. So one of the benefits that I'm seeing in using this as a tool is that it cultivates the kind of relationship or rapport between students and teacher. The online environment can is it's already divided by the kind of virtual space, the ether of everything, right? So when I was in those moments, I really wanted to connect with students and I was so deeply concerned how to do this. The meaning, the checking in, the well-being discussions was a way for my students and I to check in and they get a chance to see I'm not alone in thinking or, or expressing this feeling, right? So we were able to, as a classroom in the virtual space, really bind um, in our shared feelings about whether it's misery or joy about what's going on. And it disrupts uh, the typical response that it's really deeply attached to the imposter syndrome or fake this happiness, right? Oftentimes, if we ask someone in our everyday lives how we're doing or walking on campus, I'm fine, I'm good, as the meme said. With the dog on the, with the dog at the coffee uh, table having coffee, and behind him or the dog is the world on fire, and I'm fine. Nothing really happening. All good, and other elements of it, right? You know, the means then allow for a deeper engagement. Talk to me about what's going on, and let's use this as a way um, to analyze the social world in which we find ourselves living at the moment. So we think about grit, we think about work, we think about the need to pursue advancement, to stay busy, all of those, as I kind of denoted earlier, were real pivotal talking points. And then we make meaning. How do I make meaning? How do I find meaning um, in this process today? And the means taught us that. Um, and then highlights our humanity. Everyone has feelings and sometimes those feelings are the same and sometimes they're deep. 
And I think as a diversity officer, I'm always trying to really hinge myself between the, the, the space between what's what we share and what makes us unique and what differentiates us, right? Not saying one is better than the other, but to really highlight and note that in the classroom space, like I said, we all have feelings. We don't often have to have the same feeling to be respected, right? And then this is, I think, the most important part for me, not the most, an equally important part that I cannot de-emphasize, I have to stress. It highlights the racial stratification of feelings and how students of color, first-gen Americans, students of immigrants and families are taught to express their feelings. Over and over again, I would ask my students, are you having these conversations with your family? And again, for context, I teach at a um, Hispanic serving institution, which means that I mostly have um, uh, Latinx students, African American students, but mostly Latinx students. And they say over and over again, we don't talk about feelings in my family. My mom or my grandparents didn't go to school, so they say, get through it. Don't give up. You don't need to share your feelings. And oftentimes in US society, you leave your feelings before coming into work or in the classroom at the door. Don't bring out that foolishness here. This method disrupts, challenges that, and they bring that to the learning space. And it really allows students of color, Latinx students, to really deeply engage their feelings and develop a sense of feelings and understand the value of them. Theoretically, where this contributions takes place is, uh, I just want to talk briefly about social emotional learning. When we think about um, our feelings, we really try to have our students be empathetic and show sympathy, that they are aware of each other, that they can manage it without necessarily sharing too little or too much, right? And they develop relationships, right? I think that's the, the empathy. I understand how you're feeling. I once was there. I don't invalidate. I validate those feelings. And the other um, is the equity-minded uh, learning. And one text that I like to highlight here is this equity-centered trauma-informed COVID was traumatizing for a lot of people, including myself. My sister had COVID. Um, and so we want to strike a balance between thinking about the context of the pandemic, right, but also in and beyond that, this idea that we should all be informed by equity and all be informed by the, this, the chaos and state of the world and not calling anyone out, but inviting everyone in to share. So those that social and emotional learning and the equity minded is really informing how I am now writing through um, equity of mood in my work. So those are just two visuals for that. Now, here is the time where I ask if you want if you have a meme, if you want to share it in the chat, please do. And if we populate those memes, how are you feeling? Please share a meme, reflect uh, uh, so that we can talk about it. And, and if it populates, we'll share. But I am done. Thank you all for allowing me to share my work with you all about equity of mood. And now I just invite um, conversation, reflection, engagement for this. So thank you all. Oh, here's the chat. How to share a meme for computer. Uh, Kelly, I think if you go online and find the link to the meme, and if you put the meme link in the chat, I can click on it and open it and it'll pop up. And so for now, are, are there any questions, any thoughts? Uh, we can now um, engage uh, a collective conversation as we search for means. Uh, is it sorry? Sorry, Torres Kirby? Yes, hi. Uh, um, thank you for your presentation. Um, so my question is, do you give instructions to students on how to post gifts or do they already know this? I, I think for the most part, they know it. Oftentimes I say, um, uh, go on the internet and find a meme and share the link. I'll say that out loud. Um, and they typically just do that. For the, for the most part, they will either embed it in Padlet or they would share the link in it. And that's how I populate. And I can probably, I probably have an example of this. So you see, I, I'll just say, you know, you know, oh, this, oh, I should say this panel here was a meme in response to the readings, Foucault. And they would share um, and it would pop up like this. And sometimes with the meme already embedded and sometimes there would be a link to it. 
if that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Uh-huh. Eric, you share, are you getting enough rest? <laughs> Uh, let's see what this, this is the cat. See another cat meme. We love our cat memes. <laughs> uh, uh, Eric, do you want to say what that meme means to you? Testing, testing. Just want to make sure I'm coming through. Yes. Oh, okay, wonderful. Uh, well, <laughs> um, picture worth a thousand words. Um, I think that this pretty much mates uh, the way that I'm feeling as we're several years now into the pandemic and the general mood across our institution is that of burnout. Yeah. And I think this captures that. Yeah, yeah, it does. It really does. Oh, I see so much in this. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> but thank you. Burnout is very real. And our students will experience that at the start of the semester. Because remember, even though the semester has started, they have probably worked all summer. Or, or, or babysit or care for family. You know, they don't get a break. Bethany, you asked if you don't mind me reading your uh, message to me. Uh, um, uh, thanks for the wonderful, thoughtful presentation. Wondering, was it intentional that many students posted anonymously on Padlet? Yes. So on Padlet, if they don't have an account, it'll pop up as uh, like anonymous, right? If they have a Padlet account, their name will show. So I let students know that it wasn't intentional. So when I call on them, I ask them to say their name and who they are. And sometimes they would write their name in response, right? So I would let them know, you know, um, if you have an account, your name will pop up. If you don't, it's anonymous, X, Y, and Z. Um, I'm curious of, uh, as your thoughts about building community while uh, still respecting space. Yes, it's so what I like about means is that it's voluntary. It's not, like I said, it's not like a part of an incentive mechanism. It's not a quiz. It's not anything I just like to invite. And not, I don't imagine that every student shared, um, but it did allow for those who wanted to, it allowed for it, because it was voluntary, it just gave everyone the option. Um, and so some students would say, I'd rather just, just let the image speak for myself. And then some students would say, well, can you just read my thoughts in the chat? So they didn't want to speak on the computer and I would just read their thoughts in the chat. So I like that aspect. It was a lot of different options, right? No one was forced or felt like, oh God, I have to do this, you know? Makes sense. Bethany, I hope that makes a lot of sense. Carolina, thank you for your comment. Um, if you don't mind me reading, uh, thank you so much. This was engaging, very engaging session means and gifts can also help, yes, neurodiverse students who struggle with language to accept. Absolutely. And a part of my thinking with that is because I was also receiving a lot of, over time, I was receiving a lot of communication from the Office of uh, um, Student Services or with the Office of Disability Student Services Unit. And I was receiving um, extra steps I can take to help advance or make sure that students with neurodiversities um, feel like they can participate in class and a part of that thinking and a part of and I and a lot of my students would say I'm neurodiverse so this helps right and so me coming to Cal State was actually my first time grappling with neurodiversity and I'm so happy that I did it so part of it was me responding and also just reading more uh, but it certainly does help neurodiverse students Cody, um, this is awesome. Oh, thank you. And you shared this meme. And it's the, is this meme? Can you talk about the screaming face? <laughs> I was just trying to find one that was awesome. I'm not even sure what movie this is from, but I just- It looks been, like 300 or so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love, I love the, the way that you've been able to draw emotion from students to be able to share their perspective in a, in a non-threatening way. And um, I just think it's, I think it's great, something to look forward to. I, if I were a student in your course, then I would look forward to seeing, oh, how are people feeling today, you know, and to be able to communicate that. Because usually online instructors, there's no way of knowing that unless a student's sending you a scathing email or something, you know, it's, it's hard to see that. So I just thought. Yeah. And what I'm, my next step is uh, really, I, I would read my evaluations and they will often say, this is a caring space. What I'm doing next is really thinking about, can I measure the effectiveness or the impact of these memes on engagement? I, I'm, I did see a lot over the course of my teaching online and virtual spaces, the increased engagement to responding or using the chat or using the panel itself to engage 
the engagement did increase. I just don't know by how much. And so now I'm interested and curious around uh, that aspect as well. Like, does it really help for students to check in and does checking in lead to their uh, engaging with the course material? And no one really got an F in the class unless they didn't show up. For the most part, everyone got an A or a B, you know, so. Okay, any other questions? Let me go back to this. And of course, my Padlet, uh, like I said, it's, it was a lot. And like my Padlet is, is, is three years worth. And so this is only just a few examples of that. I'm just scrolling through the chat, everyone. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm done. I don't, are there questions? I think I'm done, Cody. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Thank you so much. That was amazing. And thank you so much, everyone who, who joined us today. Um, feel free to revisit this. Uh, the, I know all of these um, presentations will be archived and, and shared with everyone afterwards. So thank you so much. Hold on, Cody. There was one more. And I just want to acknowledge Eva Figueroa. She sent this me. Uh, it says some days it's hard to find motivation. Some days motivation. Oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so Eva, before we go, do you want to say something to this um, me here? Um, I was just looking for something that was relevant to express like everything that I'm feeling right now. Um, it was a great session and I felt inspired and, you know, it's, you know, some days are drudgery and like, I feel like I'm not making any progress and other days like, oh, yay, this is awesome. And I love this idea. And so thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Okay, everyone. Enjoy your, or what's today? Wednesday. Enjoy your Wednesday.